temperature of 15. Do you have to, he said four minutes. Four minutes. Okay, very good. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. We are going to be going live on air here in about four minutes, and I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University today, and we've got some really special guests that you're going to get to meet here in a few minutes and uh, might get the chance to talk to some student entrepreneurs throughout the show. Uh, but we're going to be tackling, uh, we'll still be going at it in the hot list, hit list, in the boardroom battles, and but you're going to get a chance to just hear some different businesses and I want to give a, a huge shout out and thank you to uh, Jamie, uh, who is the producer here at Liberty University that's uh, handled everything. And then, of course, uh, uh, another one of the engineering staff here and Tom and the engineers at iHeartRadio back in Orlando, Florida. They've worked uh, diligently with one another to make this broadcast possible. So I'm very thankful uh, for that. If you have any questions, we are not taking calls minutes, today, three minutes, three minutes, but we are going to be, I will still get questions. So if you have questions for any of my guests or the student entrepreneurs, feel free to reach out and let me know. Also, because we are broadcasting live remotely, uh, there may be some sound uh, challenges or things like that. Feel free to just comment on there uh, on the live stream so that uh, the team can take care of that. Uh, make it louder, make it softer, uh, whatever needs to be done. Uh, we'll, we'll work to make sure that happens. Welcome again and look forward to uh, an incredible show. Are they going to bring the students in? Someone might just be coming right, like right in. That's up to you, which is fine. But since we'll be talking, they will see recommend it. Do you recommend it? Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, Tom. The, those, no, no, those Tom, can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, we're you're fine. You're, you'll be able to hear fine. I'm going to get everybody's uh, level real quick. So if you just want to say something. Testing <clears throat> one, two, three. Welcome to Liberty University. Testing one, two, three. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. <laughs> I hear you, Tom. Thank you, brother. Until people get here, throw on a headset so you can hear. Those don't work. Oh, okay. Thanks, Tom. They can have the headset on. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Robertson. I'm taking your calls, questions, and opinions on all things entrepreneurship every Thursday at noon Eastern at 407-916-5400. Uh, you can tell me about your product, service, or business. 
So you can also send me your questions live at CourageousRadio.com anytime throughout the show or throughout the week. You can go on our Facebook, search at Courageous Media, and you can send, uh, watch us live or send some questions. We love it when our guests watch our live stream. We get about 20,000 people living, uh, live streaming every week. It's a lot of fun because we get to talk to you through commercials. You get to see some of the behind the scenes. You get to see all the things that don't go right. You get to see the bloopers, and it's all kind, kinds of fun. It's really the entrepreneur experience. You get to see what it's like to actually execute some of these things. But today is a very special day for me. I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. I graduated with my MBA from Liberty back in 2007, and it's been the absolute best business education that I received, including my doctorate degree. Uh, and I want to welcome my in-studio audience and shout out um, a huge, actually, thank you to Chris Carroll, Jeff Murphy, and the leadership of Liberty University for making this possible. It's very exciting how God's kind of knit our hearts and just the vision for impacting the marketplace in the world for the kingdom. Uh, you've been such gracious hosts. I'm very excited uh, to cheer on the men's hockey team this week. And uh, I also know that it's a very special homecoming weekend. And so uh, we're delighted to be here for the football game as well. Uh, so you can follow me uh, in my time at Liberty on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, not Snapchat. Uh, I think they are grasping for relevance right now. And uh, you can also not follow me on Google Plus because you know that data breach that they denied happening? Yeah, they shut down Google Plus last week, a day or two after that happened. So uh, it's done. But other than that, you'll be able to uh, follow what we're doing. All right, now it's uh, time for my take on this week's top business news before we jump right into uh, our guests. First of all, Facebook's investors, uh, major investors, are wanting Mark Zuckerberg to step down. Uh, you know, Facebook just came out again and had to acknowledge that they lied about the video ads and views and pays and how they're doing that. And uh, we've got a special guest, uh, my daughter, Lauren, that's in the studio with us today. And we were talking about integrity in business just yesterday and this morning and understanding what that looks like. And it's amazing how major corporations still don't understand the value of integrity. And so uh, Burberry announced that they're coming out with a monthly collection. You know, I have over the last month, I talked about Sears and obviously the I had said last Thursday that they were probably going to file bankruptcy over the weekend. Sure enough, they did at 1.26 a.m. Monday morning. I'm still counting that as the weekend, though, because it was before we woke up on Monday. But it was that that happened. And, uh, you know, they were an American icon, went from $100 a share to under $1 a share uh, over a seven-year, a uh, 10-year period and declining revenues for the last seven. And But, you know, the real win here with Sears going uh, filing Chapter 11 is the malls. Because what happened is Sears has beat them down for so long on rents, and uh, and they don't pull in the people. So they've got this massive amount of square footage that they can't generate higher revenues per dollar. And even when you're getting a percentage of sales, you'd want somebody who's selling more than Sears has been selling. So uh, anyway, but Burberry is doing it right. Now, I also shared about how uh, Michael Kors bought Versace a few weeks ago for a little over $2 billion. Uh, we coach the luxury brand coach was on boardroom battles uh, last week. And, uh, and so, and, you know, given the trunk club and these other monthly programs like Harry's uh, razors or quip or uh, the dollar shave club, where they automatically refill whatever the product or service is in the trunk club was doing that with clothes. And so one of the things that, that uh, Burberry announcing this week that they're doing this monthly collection is brilliant. Uh, as I said, on boardroom battles with coach, They've got to stop thinking in terms of spring collections, fall collections. It's so archaic, and the retail sector is ripe for innovation. So I really like that Burberry is getting ahead of, of that. Obviously, McDonald's and Burger King got an F on the antibiotics, uh, and so did Five Guys and a number of others. It was actually uh, amazing, so hopefully they'll look into some of those things. Netflix subscri uh, subscribers are up. Their revenue is down. People aren't sure that they're even going to see a pathway to profitability, and the Wall Street investors just don't care. They don't mind right now. The stock's doing well. And uh, because subscribers, you know, if you get the eyeballs, it's kind of like Facebook. The value was in the subscribers and they weren't even paying anything. And so you got to figure out the, the business model. It's different. It's a new era. And so they're going to they're gonna have to figure that out, especially as it comes to licensing. It's not just about the subscribers. It's the back-end licensing deals for the shows. And as you know, they've been getting more into creating their own shows and their own content and obviously, so is Amazon Prime. So that's clearly, you know, part of the future. Tesla, two thing, interesting things about Tesla before we move on. There's just so much business news this week. First of all, uh, you know how I told you that te uh, 
uh, Elon Musk got fined by the SEC for $20 million. Tesla got fined $20 million because of his illegal tweet, <laughs> uh, which was which what you can't do as the CEO of a public company. And uh, and so it was illegal. And he settled with the the SEC and including he lost his chairmanship, mm-hmm. maintained his uh, CEO role. But I, he, I noticed he announced yesterday that he's going to invest and buy $20 million worth of Tesla stock. I don't think that number was a coincidence. I'm sure the board said, uh, hey, buddy, uh, you're not just paying your $20 million fine. You're paying our 20 mil fine, too. And uh, so anyway, uh, he also bought they just bought a two billion dollar property for a gigafactory in Shanghai, China, which I will be uh, speaking. Uh, Bloomberg asked me to speak in uh, on December 6th and 7th in Shanghai, China at their conference. And so uh, I'm honored to be there as well for them. So if you're going to be in Shanghai, let's uh, let's meet up. And uh, but but very excited about what's happening there. I am thrilled to have two very special guests from Liberty University. As I said, I'm broadcasting live today from from my alma mater in their studio. They've got great technology. We've been able to take a tour of the campus. It's been a been such a blessing, and it's a beautiful beautiful campus. And in the studio today, I have Chris Carroll, who's the vice president of Liberty University, and Dr. Scott Hicks, the provost of Liberty University. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you. So I, I want to start off real quick. And Chris, if you can kind of give just a, a, a brief overview of, of Liberty University and, you know, from your perspective, especially as long as you've been here. It was 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago, when Dr. Jerry Falwell had a vision for not just a Christian day school, but a Christian university. Mm-hmm. And as it was founded, the message was, we're going to train champions for Christ. And so if you look at Liberty's short history, uh, we've accomplished more than most schools have done in hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we give God the glory of great leadership. We had an entrepreneurial founder. We have an entrepreneurial leader today and, and his son, Jerry Jr. So it's, it's just been an honor to be here 30 years and to serve and be part of what God has done on this campus. Thank you very much. And, you know, I had the privilege of meeting you uh, and Jeff in, in Orlando, Florida, and it still amazes me how God moved in that conversation. We went from the moment we met, we couldn't even look down at the menu for an hour and a half. I've been in, in, I I traveled 50 out of 52 weeks for years as the CEO of either the hoverboard company or a nutraceutical company or in other organizations. And, um, you know, obviously business meals, you know, four or five nights a week. I've never, ever had that kind of a God moment and that kind of an experience. Uh, and, and I think it just bears witness of what's happening here on campus, you know, seeing how different it is, how it's grown. The school of business, the, the, the nursing programs, the aeronautical programs. Uh, obviously, we're in a broadcasting and a media uh, environment and studio and the science and the, uh, you know, just everything. And of course, people can see the pictures uh, and some of the live streams on my, on my social media. But what God's done here really is amazing. We really believe that if it's Christian, it should be better. Uh, We have alums and students currently in the White House. Uh, We have congressmen, senators, uh, sheriffs, local state governments, nurses, doctors. Uh, It's just been amazing how God has taken our students. They've gone out into the workplace, and they've been dramatically successful beyond what any anyone ever thought they would be. What you said uh, is what we preach in terms of Christians should be better. You should have better businesses. You should run better. Second Samuel talks about that they have God gave them, the men of, of Israel at that point a greater understanding of their times. We should be better. We should demonstrate more excellence in our work, more integrity in our behavior, and uh, and we know. I mean, we have the recipes for. Uh, prosperity for or pr- to be prosperous and successful in Joshua 1 7 through 9. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'll be right back with Dr. Scott Hicks, the provost of Liberty University, and some student entrepreneurs. Thanks, Tom. All right, welcome. Hope you're enjoying the uh, the broadcast. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we'll have, uh, of course, it's on uh, a number of different platforms. And so, gentlemen, thank you again. This has thank been you, this thank has you. been good. I appreciate it. And then Dr. Scott will will be with you right when we come back. All right. Are we going to be throwing a headset on you? Oh, that's up to you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm just here for the ride. Got my show done this morning. Been here since 6:30. It's been a long day. What time well, did your show start? What do you do? 
What, I, what's your show? I'm the morning show host on Tuesdays and Thursdays it's called the Get Up and Go Show, which uh, ends up encompassing a number of topics from sports to politics to news to whatever we really want it to be. Okay. Just so long as it keeps people interested. Yeah. And um, I enjoy it. It's a great experience. It's great exposure. And I hope that it's something I can kind of further into a future career. But I'm, uh, I'm not really sure what exactly that'll end up being. At this point, it's just trusting that God has a plan and fearing every day and praying that every day will turn out well. Right. Do you and, have um, guests on or how do you? We have some guests that come in. I had like a friend of mine stop in today. Uh, she was uh, just walking by outside where we had mentioned it before. Mm. Um, we had the Trump Prophecy uh, director, star and mm -hmm. co-star on last week, which was a really cool experience to me. Um, Karen Bowles, Chris Nilsson, uh, Stephanie Schultze. Um, <coughs> and talked to them about their uh, premiere. I actually just uh, finished interviewing Mike Weaver earlier this morning, the um, lead singer of uh, Big Daddy Weave. Okay. So that was pretty cool. Um, it's all been a great experience. Wonderful. And I enjoy it. So we have some? Okay, very good. All right. Welcome. Jump on in. I think we're going live in about one more minute. But what we need to do is, uh, Dr. Scott will be on here first. Is this, does this have a... Uh, That's what I was going to ask you was, are you, can you plug, or can one of us plug into the board and then use this one or no? Or is uh, this one that you're plugged into? No, we're back in actually, one minute. I don't know if they can hear. If you guys can hear this. Oh, yeah. oh cause does the one over there not work? Well, it's using it for the web streams. Yeah. Now I understand. My apologies. I was trying to like follow all the cords and so on. To Jeff Jacobs. Jeff Jacobs. Okay. okay. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. We're being counted down through here, and the show elements in the beginning and the end here. So is J uh, J uh, he's going to need to get a, a headset on for this, or at least be in the mic. Jeff, uh, maybe switch places with him, or at least move your mic over so I can see you, if you don't mind. Oh, this one? Yes. Yeah, just so I can see you. Yeah. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time, except for today, because I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and I've got some special guests in the studio with me. Joining me on the program today, I've got student entrepreneurs from Liberty University, but before that, we are uh, privileged to have the provost of Liberty, Dr. Scott Hicks. Dr. Scott, thank you for being with us. Thank you. You know, one of the things I found fascinating was that, you know, you haven't been in academia your whole life, and you understand business people and entrepreneurs. Well, we've got a whole bunch of them listening, and I would love for you to just kind of share about yourself. We've gotten to hear about Liberty a little bit, but you, kind of your story and how you're able to relate to entrepreneurs and business people. Yeah, what, what uh, Chris was talking about earlier, if it's Christian, it ought to be better. Uh, I'm a Liberty alum, uh, and they made a huge investment in me in my undergraduate studies, and uh, what I gained here was truly amazing uh, from the professors that invested in me. And I went out into uh, corporate America, uh, eventually found myself in the oil industry downstream, the last mile of the, of the supply chain, with uh, Mansfield Oil, the nation's largest distributor. And um, worked my way through great mentorship, uh, hard work, uh, teachability, confident humility, uh, a very entrepreneurial spirit, service-minded uh, approach. Um, to the uh, basically to the top of my division uh, to be director of retail operations uh, before coming to Liberty hmm. and uh, was able to bring that corporate mentality and that entrepreneurial spirit of how we serve others and meet them where they are back into the academic world and we've seen huge success out, out of it uh, especially when I was dean in our school of business uh, watching it grow rapidly of course uh, under great leadership here at the university so it, it was a great opportunity for me to come out of corporate and mesh well with academia. Right. So. Right. And, you know, it's interesting, a, f a few things. Number one, you had shared, you know, you, you started off in a family business, mm -hmm. which is, it, it, I, I think there's that's even one of the courses, or at least, a, a, you know, they touch on understanding that because that's an entire, that's a different animal, understanding how to do that and transfer of leadership and the dynamics involved in family business and generational business like that is it's, its own unique challenges. You no, know, it is. It's, it's very hard. Uh, I don't think people really understand it when they start to get into it. Right. Uh, because it's hard to fire a family member. Right. right? <laughs> um, and 
you know, we I say that kind of facetiously, but, you know, if we love someone, we're going to hold them accountable. Yeah. And in our corporations, we hold people accountable because we care. And uh, we want to see us all be successful together. Uh, but family businesses and, and obviously a startup is hard to do, yes. period. Um, and ours was all in construction, so you can imagine the ups and downs of construction. And I grew up in that lifestyle my whole right. life. Feast or famine. Oh, yes. And uh, sometimes you lose your shirt, yes. right? Oh, yes. Um, and But it's those failures that define who you are. Yes. Right? People are afraid of that failure, but... As believers, we should we should embrace in that conflict, challenge, crisis, and change. Right, that's what we're guaranteed yes. is going to happen in a Christ-like manner. And through that, then you begin to learn how to serve others, serve them in the markets that they're in, uh, and meet them where they are. And then your business begins to thrive. You know, I don't uh, I, I don't work well with people that I that haven't been through great pain mm-hmm. because pain changes people, yes. and all pain. Uh, is a result of having the wrong influence in your life. It, you can always trace it back to a person or a people group. Every loss, whether it's financial, every uh, relationship issue, whatever the challenges are, every pain, loss, grief, or sorrow is because of, of, of the wrong individual in your life, and which is just a biblical principle of being careful who we associate with and be careful who your friends are. You know, and They always say you'll be the average or you'll have the average, your income will be the average of your five closest friends, but really it's worse than the, uh, your income. You will be the average of your of your of those around you. You will think like them. You will process information like them. You will uh, you really will do things that you might not otherwise have ever ever done because of the wrong influences. Of course, I'm thinking of Amnon and, and Tamar and you know stories along those lines where uh, it specifically says, but he, you know he had this in his heart for a long time. But he had a friend named Jonadab. But he had a friend, and I just keep playing in my head. But he had a friend. But he had a friend. But he had a friend. Who are my friends? Who are my friends in business? Who are my friends that I'm spending evenings with or weekends with or traveling with? That's why I'm honored to have Dr. Ken Weningu from Nairobi, Kenya as my right hand and traveling with me and lifting my arms up and keeping me going and keeping me encouraged and helping uh, relieving things from me so that I can stay rested in the Lord because the, the battle is real. And we're going to experience pain and loss and suffering. And it's like you said, how we deal with that pain, uh, how we sink without drowning uh, as we're walking on the water in faith, doing, taking land, enlarging territory, you know, for the kingdom, uh, it's a warfare. So I'm, I'm just thrilled. Thank you for what you're doing here in the stand that Liberty's taking. And, of course, like you mentioned, the business program had rapidly grown. And uh, as I understand, it's the largest degree program here. So Liberty is just a, a great place to get the, uh, a, a degree in, in any kind of business endeavors. I know it's where I learned things that really helped me uh, run an international business. And then uh, we also have the nursing as the, you know, uh, the, one of the best nursing programs in the country. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the aeronautical school, which I'm a private pilot. Um, I've got about 300 hours. Uh, I'm not commercial, you know, and those kind of things, but I love it. I love it. It started off because I needed to fly from Montana to Oregon when I was CEO of a company there. Uh, and then it trans, uh, morphed into, really, I just enjoyed it. And it was one of the greatest stress relievers for me, that and riding horses. So uh, it's just everything that you're doing is uh, is right in line with business, entrepreneurship, and, and really reaching the marketplace for the kingdom. So thank you so much for, for being on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio today. We're also privileged to have... Uh, one of our student entrepreneurs from Liberty University, Jeff Jacobs, in the studio with us today. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, tell us about your business. What do you do? About my business? Um, what my, you want to do? <laughs> my business is, is building relationships right now. Really? Uh, tell me I, about this. That's my job. So, I'm in the MBA program here at Liberty. Um, I'm also a graduate assistant um, in one of the athletics programs. And um, right now, it's it's about building a, a base of relationships. I believe there's a book called The Power of Who by Bob Bodine. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in that, and um, you already know everyone you need to know. And so, yes. my goal right now, and my business, I guess, is um, finding those relationships that are going to uh, be beneficial for me in the long run, and, and uh, building those. You know, so many thoughts come to mind. Number one, you know, everyone always talks about it's not what you know, it's who you know. I think it really you should take it one step further. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. Mm-hmm. When you could keep your head down, when you stay focused on what God's called you to do, I promise the people who need to know you will know you. You don't have to put yourself in the place. You don't have to go stand before the king. You can be like David out in the field. You're just doing what you're supposed to do, tending the sheep. And they'll look at the lineup and be like, nope, he's not here. You got any more boys? I sure do, but you don't want to, oh, I, I want to see him. And they'll go call you. I think we're in the relationship economy. You know, it started off the industrial age from the 60s into the, to the really the early 90s, late 80s. 
early 90s. They started getting into the technological and the information age, especially in the 2000s. And we started having more information in the course of three or four years than we had in all of human history. Uh, and then now we've moved from just that, what do we do with that information overload into the connection economy? And that is the currency, as we saw with companies like Facebook and Twitter and, and their valuations. And we're going to be talking about Twitter in just a few moments. So I hope you'll stick around and join us for that. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio being broadcasted live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'll be right back after a word from my sponsors with the Hot List Hit List. It is this week's list of business winners and losers. We'll see you after the break. All right. Good job. Yeah. Be able to tell me where the live stream is currently going to because I have people asking. And uh, just go to courageousradio.com. That's uh, what that's they'll go there. Start, There's a watch live button. Yeah. Got it. That's the easiest. Jeff, can you share what you developed for the business side and all the sports? Is that something you can share? Um, I, can, I, can, I can say that I did something along those lines. Okay. I can talk about it. Yeah, just tell us about it. You know, it's okay. interesting. You're talking about relationships and relationships. You go to Luke 10, 27, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, love your neighbors yourself. So if you want to build relationships, you want to build businesses, you want to build markets, uh, if you want to meet people where they are, love them first. Serve mm-hmm. them where they are, not where you are. You serve them where they are. And when you understand that, then you're understanding economics, mm-hmm. basic economics. Mm-hmm. And then you understand how to shift, you know, marketing, how you shift that demand your way. Um, what, what we, if you you follow what we do is we tend to worship ourselves, right? And so when you when people find that you're serving them where they are, they become in great need of you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so when you talk about a relationship economy and you serve them where they are, then they're like, hey, I want that guy on my team, or I need to partner with that guy, or I need to partner with that company, because it creates extreme value for them. And it, it impacts your bottom line, too. Mm-hmm. And it's biblical. Yeah. The other thing, too, and Scott can speak more to this, how many, all of our residential degrees, and there's even more, are all available online. So mm. an entrepreneur doesn't have to quit their dream, quit their job. You don't have to leave your family. They can just get better. You can get your Where degree. they are. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, wow. that's one seven. of the keys that's made Liberty even more special. Yeah, we, we're good at putting product on the shelf. We have over 700 programs out there today. Hmm. Uh, over, programs too. Yeah, over over two thousand courses, uh, almost in each modality. So hmm. uh, it's just pretty amazing. What do you say? One minute. One minute. All right. Uh, I would like for us to uh, kind of touch on exactly what we just talked about coming into this. If it goes the way it goes, then then fine. If not, we'll jump right into uh, to what was it that you uh, were working on? Um, I work with athletics. I'm I've been working on kind of renovating their documents in Excel. So okay. learning how to put them into a So digitizing, yeah. you know, bringing things, migrating over. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Tom. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Not this Thursday, though. I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I have some really special guests in the studio today. If you've been tuning in, uh, we have Jeff Jacobs, one of the student entrepreneurs here, and we're going to be be sharing a little bit about him. But if you're not watching us live, you just missed an incredible commercial break. And I love our sponsors, and I'm very thankful for them. But you sure missed some great conversation. And so I kind of want to pick up where we left off. We were talking about the relationship economy, and Jeff uh, uh, was talking about how he builds relationships. And really, that's a just viewing that and being very intentional about building relationships. And Dr. Scott Hicks, the Provost of Liberty University, had, had a few thoughts. So, Dr. Scott, would you please share just kind of the words that you were speaking into us about uh, understanding relationships and building relationships. Yeah, when it comes to relationships, one of the things that we, we look at is uh, the Gospel of Luke, Luke 10, 27, the two greatest commandments. Uh, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul. Love your neighbors yourself. That's what we want for every Liberty student, uh, which is simply how do we meet people where they are? How do we serve them where they are? If you 
if you look at the characters in the Good Samaritan parable, there were, there were thieves, there were priests, Levites, mm -hmm. and the Samaritans. So there were people who were dependent, independent, and interdependent, right? Mm -hmm. And dependency is, I'm going to take what you have, right? Mm -hmm. And independency is, if you can keep what you have, that's great. And, mm -hmm. and interdependency is, how do I serve you with what I have? Mm -hmm. right? And when we, when we meet people where they are, in businesses, and our families, and our relationships, we're serving them, and we're meeting their needs on their terms, not, not on ours. And then what they do is then they begin to see it. Uh, it's, it's almost like a drug, right? They, they're like, wow, I've never met anybody that will pour into me and serve me in the way that you are. Right. And then those businesses and those relationships begin to move towards uh, whatever you're offering them, right? And then your business begins to grow, and it's all, and, and that's simple economics, right? Mm -hmm. That's economics 101, that's marketing Right. Right. You know, a life of service uh, is, is really what it's about. And it's not just you maybe you have to be intentional about it first, but really it's a heart issue. Is. This really is stemming from do I love people? Do I love pouring into people? Am I living to get or do I live to give? Do I live to serve? And when you're constantly trying to, how can I honor you? How can I bless you? How can I speak life into you? How can I help your business? How can I help you over here? And when that is your tendency, your natural innate inclination, it's amazing how God God will sustain you. You know, so so many people, especially as it relates to relationships, you can see on social media, you know, don't you take that, you know, you stand every don't be a doormat and whatever. And you know, we talk about being selfless, selfless uh, in relation in a marriage covenant relationship, you know, and and the the response to that in this culture is not positive. Because it's, you know, you stand up for you. You, you. you are the one, you know, and you look out for, for numero uno over here and, um, and they can like it or, or, or lump it and, and, and leave if they, don't, if they don't want to be a part of that. And that's not the spirit. And it certainly isn't going to work in business. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many entrepreneurs fail. And that's why the best thing I can do to help entrepreneurs is not give them tactics and strategies. There are business seminars coming out of our ears, every chamber of commerce. Every city in America, no matter how small, has business conferences you can go to and learn how to do a lot of the, 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 the tackling. What you, what you can't find is someone that can help the person so that you get the right person who then goes into the business and then it succeeds. And that's the heart that we work on with people and with entrepreneurs. And that's the number one issue whenever people call in that we have to deal with. It's usually a personal problem, not a business problem at all. Jeff, you were talking a little bit about what you're doing with athletics and, of course, bringing uh, document conversion. And I think there's a lot of businesses, by the way, some of them that I work with that are still on Excel spreadsheets and just really a very archaic in their methods, uh, method keeping and so forth. So tell us the work that the project that you're involved in here. Uh, well, first, just to jump back really quick, I, I think the shortcoming of, of my generation of entrepreneurs is the lack of learning servant leadership. And so mm -hmm. jumping right into a company and, and being the CEO from your startup is great. And that's a great opportunity to do a lot of work with a lot of people, but you miss kind of what the generation over us taught us of working from the bottom and working up. So being the low guy on the totem pole and doing what I'm doing, which is the, the heavy work of moving data from one spreadsheet to another and just making it look nice. And, and that's not what the executives need to be doing because they have the big picture in mind. And the currency that they deal with is relationships like we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And they, they have um, all of their colleagues that they call if they have a problem. Um, so what I do is I, I'm working on um, just modernizing a lot of worksheets with uh, the organization that I'm dealing with. And, and that's really the bottom level thing. But what I'm learning there is um, how to do that bottom level work. And so eventually, Hopefully, when I am the leader of an organization, I can have uh, empathy towards those guys at the bottom and build relationships there. You said so many things, brother. I think you're, you're right on. Uh, number one, uh, you'll never make it to the top and, and be effective without understanding that one of the best things about doing it yourself is you also under learn how long tasks take so you don't get snowed as much. You're able to have more discernment, which is biblical. You know, you're able to have more wisdom because you did it. You know, if they say, well, this is going to take me a week and, you know, no, no, it takes about 45 minutes if you just go do it, you know. Uh, and I'm telling you, I've been on the wrong side of that where I bl believed what I was being told. And then when I actually finally went and did it myself, I realized how the system was flawed and how it really did not take that long. But it's like you said, it goes back to a heart. That is your heart to want to be a servant leader. How do I give and serve? And that's what places you in the places of prominence. A man's gift maketh room for him. 
and cause them to stand before great men. And that's your heart. And I think that's fantastic. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll obviously be very successful with that. I don't think that in, in the founder of one of the largest incub, uh, incubators, startup incubators in the country, doesn't like uh, college student entrepreneurs, uh, doesn't like funding college student entrepreneurs. I love youth entrepreneurs. I, I helped my daughters both when they were one was five and one was eight start businesses. I love teaching the principles of entrepreneurship because they're so biblical and sowing and reaping and just the, the skill set and communicating with people and articulating a value proposition. Those are all great skills to have. But uh, but in terms of being funded, that's what really ruins it. And so um, I totally agree that starting where you're doing, building it, I would not want to fund very much at all someone like that because they learn so many valuable skills having to bootstrap it, figure it, figure a way to get it there. Overcoming that is what will help them become the best kingdom entrepreneur, the best kingdompreneur possible. All right, it is time now for my hot list, hit list. Number one on the hit list, starting with, with the bullseye, do not track. Over 9 million people have the Do Not Track feature enabled on their internet browsers to prevent websites from collecting data and following them. And according to Gizmo, uh, Gizmodo this week, this is like spray on sunscreen. It does absolutely nothing for you. In fact, it, it, here's the thing. It's misleading at best, and it's completely dishonest at worst. Uh, because you got Yahoo, Twitter, and others who had pledged to follow that. It was supposed to be like the Do Not Call list of the internet. And, and so these companies pledge to follow that, and then they've reneged on that commitment because, you know, even Google Chrome, which offers a Do Not Track, they refuse to follow, uh, you know, that as well. So uh, Do Not Track, you know, people find out that that's not really doing anything, just like the Do Not Call list really didn't do anything. If a company was actually reported for calling people on the Do Not Call list, they would get a fine, but usually the people who were using the list, those lists were fly by night and out of business anyway by the time the SEC or the FTC was able to get a hold of them. The second company on my hit list, the Saudis. Oh, my goodness, how that is affecting business. Uh, J.P. Morgan uh, had pulled out of a, of, of a deal, a major deal this week, Saudi investment dollars. Silicon Valley was pulling off. Trust me, it's only temporary. Uh, they are not going to, uh, that, that won't be holding off for long. But uh, in an age of zero morality, I find it very interesting that a good name is still rather to be chosen than great riches because they pulled back uh, because of it was starting to get messy. Sponsors will still pull back uh, oftentimes uh, around a, an individual that they're sponsoring if things start to get messy. And even though they'll re-engage at some point, uh, there is still uh, honor is something that money can't buy. My hot list is the Exhibition Coal Mine in Beckley, West Virginia. They hosted Dr. Ken Winningu uh, and myself and Lauren earlier this week. We got to go deep into a coal mine. Hearing just how hard those men work was phenomenal. Uh, I also thought it was interesting. If a miner died, the wife, the widow, had three weeks. They put a rock in her front yard, and the wife had three weeks to remarry, or she had to move out of the coal camp. And uh, so that was pretty intense. Right. And uh, so she forced remarry or forced to be moved. My other company on the hot list is Bill Rice Academy in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's where I worked on a ranch when I was 15 and 16. It's where my youngest daughter goes to school. They graciously, graciously allowed her to travel with me this week. So glad to have her join me here at Liberty University on campus. And she's going to share a thought or two with us when we come back. I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. When I come back, it is time for the boardroom battles. We'll see you in the boardroom. Awesome. Dr. Roland, we've got one more student here. Just FYI, so you know... Wonderful. John Thomas. John he Thomas. our entrepreneurial incubator mm -hmm. as a freshman. And Thank you, Tom. started a marketing company that's killing it. Wonderful. John Thomas. All right. Welcome. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you. Lauren, can you also get on headset or on mic at least? Do you need us to make? No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine, I think. Uh, which, uh, actually, can she sit maybe right there to use this mic? Hey, Jeff probably needs, needs to roll. Right, yes, we're, 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 yeah, done. we're done with Jeff. Jeff, yeah. thanks again. Thank yeah. you, Jeff. It's a pleasure, yeah. Enjoy. She should be able to use this one. Then. Okay, and then, that's it. John, can you use that one? Yeah. I'll change it. JT has to be in, too. Hmm. You go by JT? Yes, sir. Okay. Press one? It's on. Mm. Now... You're gonna. I, I want you to go head to head with me on boardroom battles. All right. We're gonna. I'm gonna just throw out brands and we're gonna fix them. What would you do if you were the CEO 
what if you're doing on the board and things like that. All right. So, Chris, you want to be a, be a sure. part of that too? All right. Absolutely. Very good. So we'll make sure his mic's hot and, and his mic's hot here. And uh, is this all recorded? Yeah. Yes. And uh, we have about a million <laughs> listeners and then 20,000 or so. Buckle up, sophomore in college. Did you hear, this is all recorded too. My <laughs> brand is what I'm about to do. <laughs> That's a little marketing mind spinning out down there. How, how many people are watching again? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, you know, 20 million. I'll make it my business card. And you're probably, I don't, what is your <laughs> thing? about two inches? Two yeah. fingers? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just make sure that you're really into the mic. Because he said how long we have here. Yeah, we, the last was two minutes. Thank you, Tom. All right, Low Bear. I'm I'm starting off with you. Uh, and you remember what we're with what we talked about this morning. <laughs> so they have their own businesses, huh? Yeah. Well, my youngest was when she started her business at five. She was making uh, we we helped her make a thousand dollars a month. Working uh, about three hours every Saturday morning. That's, that's Sold really, donuts to car dealerships. Make that's really disinflating for a 21 year old to know a five year old makes more money than he does. <laughs> <laughs> just going to lob that one out there. So we just need to have a few conversations. <laughs> Call in next Thursday at noon. <laughs> yeah, <really right. laughs> Let's see here. We'll make sure the. That's amazing. Holy cow. How long did you say? 30 seconds. I'll go over give her grandmother an economics lesson. This is the last segment. It's a 12-minute segment. Six. This is the kind of stuff they need to teach in school. <laughs> High school, I mean. Yeah. yeah. 15 seconds. That's going to be school. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern. But this week, I'm broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, the best business school in the country. It's where I got my MBA from. You can check them out at liberty.edu. I, uh, they were sharing that they have over 700 programs uh, and, and, you know, one of the things that Chris, the vice president of Liberty, was sharing about how, you know, entrepreneurs can do this because they have, you know, almost 100,000 people who, who study and take degree courses, accredited courses online. And so you don't have to leave your business in order to, to, to learn and grow. And, and I'm telling you, it made such a difference in my work. I remember when the vice president told me one day at the Fortune 500 company, uh, he said, man, this is really good work. And he's the same guy who didn't want me to get my MBA. He said, you're the golden boy here. You don't need to go get an MBA. You're going to be taken care of. Don't worry about it. And, uh, and, and, and I'm glad I did not listen to that advice. So anyway, uh, I was giving my hot list hit list and I was on my hot list. I was thanking Bill Rice uh, Academy in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, for letting my sweet daughter travel with me this week to Liberty University and see the campus and just see the programs. So, Lauren, thank you for being on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I love every moment we have to spend together. Thank you. So what are your thoughts for entrepreneurs uh, on, on this week's program? Well, one thing that I was thinking about was not letting other people's opinions influence you. Mm -hmm. Because... That's something that a lot of us, or actually every single one of us, can relate to, with whether you be an entrepreneur or a college student, is we all have people who may disapprove of what we're doing or make fun of us for beliefs. And that's something that I think is a big deal is that we should pick a few people who we care what they think about us. We don't need to care about what everybody thinks about us, mm. whether it be in school or your business. You can yeah. be a people pleaser. You know, it's interesting. You, you, a lot of people say, I could care less what you think, you know, and they have that mentality like, I don't care what anybody thinks. And they put that out on social media and nothing matters except what I think. And But, you know, you did touch on a good point. And we were talking about having the right associations a few minutes ago. You should care what the right people in your life and the godly people and the right influences in your life think about. That's that accountability. So it's not this all or nothing, throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't care what anybody thinks. No, I care what the right people think that are going to lead me closer to, you know, the person, the relationship I'm supposed to be having with Jesus Christ. So anyway, I appreciate you being on and for sharing those thoughts. Uh, and, and when it comes to entrepreneurship and, and people, I know that integrity, we, we touched on integrity. One of the things I'm so proud about you is uh, was last semester you got an integrity award because you could have uh, the, the teacher she was supposed to use her own pen the teacher said is that your pen 
And uh, if she said no, then she was going to end up ba basically getting a detention. If she said yes, she was going to, uh, you know, life would go on. And she chose to uh, take the consequence and said, no, I, you know, I'm, this is the person's desk that I'm at. I'm using their pen. And uh, even though she did get the consequence, she got a higher award that I care way more about, uh, which was an integrity award. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because that's the character is what translates into business. She's not going to remember a 20-minute detention after school. But what I do care about at this age, this is where it starts, Chris. What, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, you see this with young people. We do. Campus. We do. Um, it's always been said a man is who he is when the lights are off and no one's looking. Mm -hmm. And that's character, and that's integrity, and I think that's one of the things that makes Liberty special. Is uh, you know we teach that. We had um, just recently one of the largest uh, automotive dealers in the country call us and say, you know what, I've been hiring a few of your graduates here and there, and they're different. Mm -hmm. I've got Duke graduates. I've got Notre Dame. I mean, the list just went on. He said, but there's something special about a Liberty graduate, and we like to think it's not just. Uh, their relationship with Jesus, but it's the ability to have the integrity mm -hmm. to understand the right from wrong and go into the boardrooms with those those type of attributes. Champions are made when the stands are empty. Yeah, Correct. It's what Correct. you do when no one's watching. No doubt about it. Uh, well, we're also, we got one more student entrepreneur from Liberty University. I want to jump in here. JT, welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. Thanks so much for having Tell me. Tell us about what you're doing. So I have a marketing company here on campus at Liberty and I work with students both on campus in a consulting relationship and helping them launch their businesses, in addition to working with other companies here in Lynchburg, specifically small businesses. Okay, are you focused on any specific market or so when, just any company? So when it comes to the Lynchburg market, I work with a lot of health and fitness brands, so like yoga studios, Pilates studios. When it comes to students, it's very broad because I'm helping students take their ideas and launch them out. Right. All right. And what are you finding? I, first of all, I love that you're niching because I think that's incredibly important out there, especially in the world of marketing, because there's a lot of different marketing companies. Um, and so how are you differentiating yourself really with them? Sure. Correct. So, well, one of the things is I have a really low overhead being a student here. So mm -hmm. I have a roof over my head and food in my mouth. I pass my classes. I have time to pursue the things. And I you have Wi-Fi. Yeah, <laughs> Wi-Fi. I have time to pursue the things I'm actually passionate about. And that's helping people take their ideas, take their brand, and share that with the world. And that comes through marketing as kind of the platform I use to do that. So the one thing that separates me from other marketing companies is take time to get to know people and really get to know their problems. Um, another thing, pricing structure is a lot easier because I have a little overhead, not many expenses. All my time is spent reading or asking good questions. Yeah. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a, bit a big advocate on tackling problems that I don't know how to do and asking people to help with that. So like, if they say, hey, can we do this? I'm like, I don't know how to do that, but you better believe I'm going to find out. Right. Or you know, that's how I ended up so. learning how to do some website stuff. I mean, the last thing I wanted to do is be coding websites and figuring that out. But I can do some soft coding. I just knew it was like coding. People are, all, are usually surprised, but it's, be, it's not because I wanted to. It's because I had to. Yeah. I had to figure it out. And I either had to pay a whole lot of money, which I didn't have, start, you know, starting the businesses, or I had to just, just do it. And yes, it took me a lot longer than what it would take a professional or someone who knows what they're doing. But I also got exactly what I was looking for. Through enough time, so I'm really glad about that. I, one one final question for you: What um, what's the objective? Like, where do you want your business to go? Is it just a small business? Is it something to get you through? Put a little jingle in your pocket, or are you actually trying to grow this into a large viable company and something you see post graduation? So I think I kind of want to tell you how it started real quick. Was through the incubator program here at Liberty. Mm -hmm. So under the school of business, they have something called the Center for Entrepreneurship, and they help students here on campus start businesses. So I went through that incubator program last year in the spring. I ended up getting second place, so I did not win the prize money for that. But that was just a great launching platform to oh, meet people and also kind of get my idea out there and say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm still gonna run with this thing. Of course. Um, one setback is not is not you know the end of the war. So, anyways, from that this summer, um, kind of refocused some stuff, built up um, some clients in Charlotte where I'm from, and then took that and took those models or those analytics in a lot of ways, took it to companies here in Lynchburg and said, hey, this is what I did for a market down the road, can I do it for you. That's how I got them going. Um, and then here on campus with a lot of students, what I enjoy doing. Is helping them take their ideas, take their brands, and launch them out. So I want to continue doing that. And long-term goal would be to continue to grow to see how God, um, you know, how God blesses it. And I love to continue doing it outside of college as well. Fantastic. Well, that's exciting. JT, thanks for being with us today on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. It's time now for the boardroom battles. I want you to stay around for it and uh, let you let you go behind the scenes. You know, I started the boardroom battles whenever I was CEO because of when I was CEO of the hoverboard company. Sure. Uh, I was dealing with over 300 Chinese manufacturers knocking off the hoverboard. We had um, 
of fires. It wasn't ours, but I still had to deal with the fires, the literal <laughs> fires yeah, yeah, yeah. in business. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so in, in, in explaining different things. So we locked ourselves in a boardroom, and it got a little loud, so loud. It was right next to the, the entryway and, and where people would wait. So they actually moved the boardroom after the first day. And so I got to thinking, if people could just be a fly on the wall and understand, like even of Apple or Microsoft, how decisions are actually made. A lot of times it has nothing to do with what makes strategic sense for the business. Mm -hmm. It's because, you know, he and I went to lunch together and we, we always have a bond and we have our way of thinking. But, you know, this guy over here kind of blocked something that I wanted to do that has, you know, the company picnic or something mm -hmm. has nothing to do with business. And yet, so if it's this idea, we're not letting it through. And we're going to delay it. We're going to cause problems, throw monkey wrenches in, the, in it so that it doesn't go where it needs to go. And so... That's what I want people to understand with the boardroom. But we're fixing some companies today. Forbes listed 22 brands at the beginning of this year that they said would be obsolete by the end of the year. And uh, so two of them, uh, Bloomin' Brands and Twitter. Bloomin' Brands is the parent company for Carabas, for Outback Steakhouse, and Bonefish Grill. They, their revenue was at $127 million uh, last year. They are at $41 million this year. They have lost 70% of their revenue. I love Outback. I love Carabas. I love Bonefish. I love the Bang Bang Shrimp, you know. Mm -hmm. But obviously, something is wrong. So regardless of loving the food, you saw what Outback, you know, the redesigning the, their, uh, you know, experience. But, but Chris, what are some of your thoughts as it relates to Bloomin' Brands? What, where are they missing the mark? Why, how do you lose 70% revenue in a year? Uh, first of all, it comes down to leadership. It does. And, uh, you know, the restaurant business uh, traditionally is one of the hardest industries to tackle and uh, accomplish. If you look at some of the most successful businesses, they're more real estate businesses than they are restaurant businesses. Yes. So uh, I believe they've got to revisit uh, some leadership issues. Um, that may be in territories. That may be in specific states. Or it may be at the top. Mm -hmm. but, you, I also but you don't fall seventy percent alone. No, and I and it may not be spread across all three restaurants. I I would be very interested. You know which which categories sure. is, is the loss occurring, and uh, and and you got to stop the bleeding. You've got to stop the bleeding, and you got to get a better viable strategy. There's also like you said, the restaurant industry is very unique, but they're kind of in a middle market. They're not you know the fast food, and yet they're not uh you know a higher end chain. So they're just that they 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 fall in that Applebee's, Chili's, a little slightly higher you know grade than, than those companies. But they're going to have to figure out which market uh, they're going to serve. I don't think they're going to be able to uh, literally serve. So we'll catch uh, Twitter next week. Users are dropping off. Sales growth is way down on Twitter. Uh, some of the senior executives abandoning the ship there. And uh, I, I've got a lot of thoughts on that. We have some investment opportunities. We have a $300,000 promissory note at 20% interest for 12 months. We've got a $140,000 investment at 20% on a promissory note. And also, I've got a $100,000 investment uh, with a public holding company that uh, you're able to do about 200% with. So if you're interested in any of the investment opportunities that come across our desk, please reach out to us at office at courageousradio.com. Office, uh, excuse me, office at courageousexperience.com. You can also get to us at courageousradio.com. Join me on my next all-inclusive three-day, two-night faith-based CEO cruise. It's February 15th through the 17th. It's $199 per person. That includes everything, including gratuities. It also includes three days and two nights with me and my friends. It's an all-access pass uh, with uh, Peter Lowe, myself, the inventor of the McDonald's Happy Meal, opened the first Ronald McDonald House, and just a lot of other amazing people. Reserve your cabin at CEOcruise.com. Also, for the Liberty folks, if you're around campus the next few days, hope to meet many of you. I want to say a special thank you again to the leadership of Liberty University. Worked so hard along with iHeartRadio Engineering and Tom uh, to make this remote broadcast possible. I really appreciate you all making a difference in so many lives. I'll be taking your calls, growing your businesses, and creating breakthroughs again next Thursday at noon Eastern time. Thank you to my amazing sponsors, Nick McCarthy at New York Life. You can Find them at CourageousRadio.com. And Tom Coach Tavern, I'm going to miss seeing everyone tonight there. I'll be back next Thursday evening. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio live from the campus of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, encouraging you to live your faith in business. Come on. This is awesome. Okay. They're still listening to this outro here. It's about 30 seconds. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. The entrepreneurs every week. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That's how you're doing a shout out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to engage in the JT, those likes are just about to spike, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll get yeah, that here in a second. Join us next week.
as Dr. Roland Roberts shares the lives oh. and businesses of entrepreneurs the world over. Right. We have uh, had a U.S. Senator on and a Congressman. Right. Right. Very good. All right. Wow. Hey, thanks for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Real quick, let you get a meet everybody behind the scenes. First of all, Tom in Orlando, thank you again, friend, for uh, all of the work that you've done. You see, uh, this is Jamie, who he gave a, a quick shout out to, Dr. Ken from Nairobi, Kenya, my sweet daughter, Lauren, who you got to hear, always amazing. And Jacob, Jacob uh, he's a broadcasting student here and uh, does the morning show Tuesdays and Thursdays. JT, you got to hear his heart. Man, that was beautiful, by the way. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we need more people understanding how to market kingdom businesses and Absolutely. just your heart. I think it's amazing. And, of course, this is Dr. Scott Hicks with the, uh, the Provo of Liberty University and Chris Carroll, who you got to hear on Boardroom Battles a little bit. Jeff, jump in the picture just so they can see. This is Jeff Murphy. And uh, Jeff and Chris are the two that God really used to uh, to, to knit my heart to, to, to liberty. I was always thankful for the education because people always commented on it. But um, – but just to be a part of it and to see what the Lord is doing here is absolutely phenomenal. It's mind-blowing. And if you're ever even near this area, I hope you'll come up and, and visit. Thanks again for joining us this week. We'll see you next Thursday. Okay.